Hi, my name is Joseph, and the title of this short film will be Electric vs. Nitro. Now, I don't have a Nitro car to show you, but I began in Nitro two years ago. I had a Kyosho 777 Inferno, I believe it was called, and um, I ran it for about six months. I used to burn two gallons a day at Revelation Raceway. And uh, it was fun. You know, the gas cost about 25 bucks a gallon. Now it's like 30 bucks a gallon, I think. So it gets expensive quite fast. Um, I sold all of my Nitro stuff after becoming frustrated to the point of boredom. And um, I never learned how to tune the carburetor, which is a big... That was a big challenge for me. Um... And I'm a really smart person, but I think I just wasn't interested in learning how to tune the carburetor. I tried. I actually tried to make myself be interested, but I couldn't. I just could not force myself to be interested enough in how to tune a carburetor. I know there's a high-speed needle and a low-speed needle, and I, I can visualize the way they each work, but anyway. I'm going to show you this car. This is an Ofna Hyper 9E, and... I'm going to let you know what you do not have to have in an electric car. You do not need, let me go ahead and take all these, take the body off and show you what this looks like. When I used to run Nitro, I had, I made a list of stuff, let me read that list to you. I had a starter box, obviously nitro fuel, glow plug igniter, a screwdriver had to be with you at all times to adjust your carburetor. You always had a break in the motor and that would be your motor could last 5 to 10 gallons. Um, then you could pinch the cylinder to get more compression. You had to keep an eye on the bearings and the crank in the motor. Um, you had to have a few glow plugs with you. Um, that ignites the fuel. You had you had a clutch, which you do not need in a an electric car, but a clutch is optional. Some people like to run the clutch and the brakes. Um, on the electric car, the brake your brake is your motor, and that's adjustable. Um, you had a clutch springs, and you had different types of clutches and different strengths of springs. Um, you had an extra servo that you don't have in an electric car, and the servo was working your throttle which operated your carburetor and the fuel, how much fuel went to your motor and it also operated your brake, your brakes on the gas car. Um, you, let's see, that's about it, that's all I wanted to mention pretty much for the nitro car. Um, as far as electric goes, you're gonna, this is what you're gonna need for to run electric. You're gonna need, um, I would say two to four LiPo batteries, lithium polymer batteries. And you're going to need, uh, I recommend the Thunder Power 50 Cs. You could run the four cells. I run the three cells, and I was, this, this car was, let me adjust my manual focus here. All right. That's how I didn't adjust it. Anyway, I run three cells and it was quite fast. It's quite fast with this with the three cell. Um, they now make a 50C battery that can be charged at 32.1 amps. Thunder Power is coming out with the charger supposed to come out in March that will charge at 30 amps. You also need a power supply that's at least probably 40 amps or more if you want to run a couple charge a couple a uh, couple chargers. I'm running the Mamba Monster motor and speed control or uh, yeah, Mamba Monster, here's the box. This is the box the Speed Control came in by Castle Creations. Steve New collaborated with Castle to make the motor so that you're getting a motor. Steve New's motors cost about $300, but you're getting a motor and a Speed Control for 300 
or you can shop around and get it for a better price. This is the 2650 motor. That's the buggy motor. Some people run the 2200, but that motor was really the 2200 was really designed for truggies and trucks. You don't need the torque that has. Um, you want the top speed. The power. This thing has so much power for buggies. 2650 motor, 2650 kV. You can see how clean this is. The Ofna Hyper 9E. Um, I also used to run the Lozy. 8E. I got. I bought that one when it first came out. Um, I've never been so happy with the car as I am with this car, the Ofna Hyper 9 Electric. I never thought I would buy an Ofna because I had this idea that Ofna was just like a small company that didn't really make that great of cars. That's just that was my impression by what people talked about. Boy, was I wrong. I mean, right now, Ofna by far is on the top of my list of quality, innovation, taking chances, breaking the mold, and just going for it. Um, I mean, look what they did here. They they moved the center diff on this. The center diff is here now. It's it's back here, right in front of the rear diff. And they put one long drive shaft going all the way across to the front. So you still have three diffs, but your center diff has moved to the back. And you just have this long, straight drive shaft there. And a very large battery compartment. You can run anything you want. I have to put these big foams right there to run my 3 cell and my 2 cell that I run. I've never need to had, had to run more than a 3 cell because the with a 3 cell, for example at Revelation Raceway where they race nitro cars, there wasn't one nitro car that was faster than this electric car with a 3 cell in it on the straightaways or the infield. Now that's not to say there wasn't better drivers than me. There was people that can outdrive me and outmaneuver me because there's professional sponsored racers like Adam Drake. He's really good. And Ryan Cavallari, but that's a different track. I haven't seen Ryan at Revelation Raceway. Um, I, I use the uh, the DX3R radio. I put a tennis grip that, that you can wrap. I use that here to make it softer. I also put some foam on the in the trigger area to make it to make that nice and easy and um, I took the foam off of my steering wheel and wrapped it with a thin tennis wrap to make my wheel smaller uh, anyway DX3R one thing I wish they had I know they make the DX3S radio which has telemetry on it but the DX3R uses DSM2 which is a faster response time not that I have ever felt the difference, but I think the DX3R has a feel that I like. Someday I would like to have telemetry that would tell me the temperature of more than one thing, though. The DX3S and the telemetry systems out there that, I, that I'm aware of only give me one temp temperature for one thing and voltage for, one, for up to a two cell, I think. I would like voltage for up to a six cell, fed back to the radio so I can see what my voltage of my battery is. And I would like temperature of more than one thing. I want temperature of my motor, my speed control, and my batteries, all three of those. Why not? But no one makes that yet that I know of. And I'm not talking about the Novak system that records it and then you can download it to your computer or something. I'm talking about real-time telemetry, where as I'm running on the track, I can pull over in the pit and peek at my screen and see what, what's going on. I think that's a great idea. I also think that electric cars need a quick release battery system like think of a uh, drill here perfect example here here is a black and decker drill look at this big fat battery on there oops okay see that battery now I push this button and that battery pops out okay now if now I know Lozy associated and Ofna, Ofna will probably do it first because they're not afraid to take chances. <laughs> anyway, I'm just happy that Ofna 